In uh, this new episode of the uh, IoT show, we're going to talk about the integration between Azure IoT and Dynamics Field Services to see how you can automate workflows, and I have Kyle with me to do that today. This is the Internet of Scene show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we'll be talking about the integration of uh, Azure IoT applications and Connected Field Service, which is a service in the Dynamics 365 uh, collection of goodness, right? <laughs> and for that, I have Kyle with me. Kyle, how are you? Good, how are you? Cool, awesome, like fantastic day here yeah. in Redmond. <laughs> and enjoying the weekend is coming. That's and, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Kyle, so what are you what are you doing for Microsoft? Give us a little short introduction of yourself. Excellent. Yes, I'm Kyle Young. I'm the product lead for Dynamics 365 for Field Service. Mm -hmm. So that's our solution that organizations can use to do all types of on-site dispatch oriented scenarios. And actually a great segue into why are we talking about this product in the context of an IoT show, right? Because right. I think it's very important to uh, to explain that uh, our customers when they, when they think about IoT, they think of it for a reason, right? They want to take action, they want to automate flows, they want to optimize in production, they want to save money, right? right, right. And they already have what we call these line of business applications, applications mm. that are meant to manage all the things that are not the IoT app itself. Right. And so we have ways in the IoT apps, in the services and the SaaS offerings and so on, to hook up directly into these applications. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, well, I think, you have this connected <laughs> field service, which is actually designed to integrate nicely with IoT apps, correct? Yes, exactly right. So in the traditional model of field service, you either schedule things out way ahead of time, thinking that you could predict when uh, or, or project when service need to be performed, or wait until something broke and then just react to that. Yeah. Um, by having device insights from IoT, we now have the opportunity of having business actions be much more intelligent by actually understanding what's happening with a given piece of equipment through the mm -hmm. devices that are on that piece of equipment and then doing the right thing, having the right business action that we can identify in field service based on the information we're getting from those devices. So basically merging device data, analytics done on that data, predict Correct. something or, or you know do your analytics and then right. leverage what you know in terms of, of maintenance and processes that are right. required right. to solve problems or whatever. Yep. Merge all of that. Yep, exactly and right. Make it, and, and automate workflows as well. I think there's one thing that's, that's fantastic, yeah. which is you can have this notion of having automation of that workflow that goes all the way from a device that says, hey, I have an anomaly mm -hmm. here, right. to having someone scheduled to come do the maintenance. Yes, exactly right. uh, Or as you yeah. were saying, sometimes the device is not, not even in fault. It's been mm -hmm. reporting something, an anomaly right. is detected, and yep. before it even fails, you can right. have that maintenance stop, right? Yeah, that's the ideal scenario, would be to have uninterrupted service on the device because you have the ability to predict. And that's a combination of the information that the device is sending at the moment, mm -hmm. maybe some history that's with the device, mm -hmm. along with service history and so forth. Cool. So that's, that's the goal that we aspire to. How about we see what that looks like, right? So then okay. we have a demo that illustrates that point and that scenario. Okay, that sounds great. So I'm going to start with what looks like a thermostat. Now yeah. assume that this is our IoT device. And so in this, con in this situation, uh, what we're seeing is some information coming from the device. So let's just, in this case, we'll just assume that it's the temperature. Okay. That's key. So 65 is a normal operating temperature, but uh -huh. let's go ahead and adjust that. So in this case, we'll move that up to something that's well above a threshold. Okay. And so what's happening in this case is this information is going through IoT Hub, mm -hmm. and then using stream analytics, there's a there are rules set that set, that determine what's an anomaly or what's something that we need to know about from the okay. field service okay. perspective. And so that information will flow through that process. So if we take a look at, we can see the, the information flowing. And what we're going to see on the dynamic side, um, when we get over here, we'll actually see what we call an IoT alert. Okay. And so what this means is that something that has met the threshold in the stream analytics job, mm -hmm. and then it goes into Dynamics as an alert. We use Azure Logic apps to actually to actually transport that okay. into uh, into Dynamics. And so if I take a look here, I can see kind of a pattern of alerts. I can see some history and see what's been happening, uh -huh. and I can actually. Um, go to the point of seeing the actual current alert that's coming in. So now we can see that alert that we just triggered uh -huh. and we can actually drill down and take a better look at that. 
Okay. And so. So you're worried. So in that case, in that scenario, so you have the thermostat. It's on the wall. Someone is yep. using it, right? Right. The one was interacting with a field service application. Who is he? What what kind of hat is he wearing? Yeah, it's a good question. So um, this could be a service manager, for example, okay. who's accountable for a set of, of customers and all of their equipment and so forth. Okay. And and so or somebody who's a dispatcher who wants to make sure that they're always on top of uh, the current needs of their customer. Okay. Okay. Right. So we give them some information. So in this case, we can actually drill down into this alert. We can look at it manually, and so we can see the information that comes in through the alert that comes in through a JSON packet, uh -huh. and you can see it in JSON form or you can see it in a more friendly form. Also, um, that information is also, be, also being streamed to Power BI SQL okay. and then we can get somewhat of a heartbeat. So we can see what's been happening over the last even few minutes with that device. Mm -hmm. And so that's based on the Power BI and we simply embed the Power BI object right here inside of the Dynamics view okay. so that service manager, whoever that person is that's responsible can take a look at what's happening. Okay. And so in this case, what we did is um, we actually triggered um, this level of the alert and this type of alert actually triggered a reset on the device. Okay. Because in some cases, the reset might be appropriate. And so what happened is we can see now that the temperature has been set back to 65 because what happened, a reboot command mm -hmm. was actually generated inside of Dynamics, again using logic apps that goes back through IoT Hub, okay. and then that command is sent to the device. So the, for in cases where a device can respond to a command, we actually have the ability to either on a manual or automated basis generate a command from Dynamics that actually gets back to the device and corrects the situation. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, but let's keep going. So let's say that it even hits a higher threshold. Yep. So now, now it's even worse. And so we're going to send a higher uh, level message into Dynamics. We'll look at, take a look at what's happening with that again. If we go back to the set of IoT alerts, you'll see just a different view of that here. Okay. And we'll see that latest one as soon as that arrives. And so now you can see that alerts come in. And so that's that, that higher threshold mm -hmm. alert. And when that higher threshold alert hits, not only do we have the same information, but we also have the heartbeat. What's happened with workflow is it's actually going to now create a work order mm -hmm. and automatically schedule or book a resource to go uh, deal with the situation. So instead of just um, you know, having somebody triage that, this one is a critical enough that we yep. know we need to dispatch somebody, so we'll go ahead and, and do that automatically. Okay. So what's happened, a work order was created, so if we follow uh, take a look at what's happening. We have an object here called the customer asset and that is mm -hmm. manages the life cycle and tracks the life cycle of that piece of equipment. Okay. So as a service manager I could actually take a look at that and we'll see what's happened here. It's, it's actually created a work order and we can take a look at that work order and the work order will have all the information that is needed for the technician to perform this this repair mm -hmm. and it can actually be informed by the type of alert that's happening and so in this case we actually know that we've got a thermostat issue okay. and it will define the set of tasks that they need to do to perform that prepare and be successful about okay. that. So the work order has been created and we can also use the scheduling functionality of the field service application okay. to um, schedule that work and so what's happened is that work order has now actually been scheduled and you can see that it shows up with Ooh. other work orders that are here on the schedule board and so this is all the work that has been um, allocated for the day for the set of resources okay. that we have. Uh, and because it's all integrated with your, you know, task force, yep. basic management tools, basically automatically gave it to you. Yeah, so we'll get it to the right person. The right person so, yeah, case, so yeah, so we'll actually go to David and David is the right resource to do that job based on the skills because we can know the type of work that needs to be done. We can match that with the right skills. Yeah, and then from here you can imagine infinite scenarios of like, hey, depending on where he is geographically speaking, yep. you know, you can actually assume Yep. that he's going to be on the route to stop by and, and exactly optimize exactly and so them. yeah it can you it, it, there's an optimization capability based mm -hmm. on their location and so forth and so he may have already had his day planned out but yep. because this was an emergency that came in we can actually use the automated scheduling to re-optimize that schedule okay. and get David on the way and so you can see now that not only did we reset this device this time but in this case you can see that the technician has been dispatched and so again mm -hmm. that's a message that comes back through IOT hub and if the device has a display for example then that would actually display back on the device. You could also use notifications, you could send a text to the customer to say the technician's on their way. Customer not, might not even know that there's a potential issue but okay. they will know that a technician will be there to actually perform the work. Full round device, 
IoT stuff, sure. goes to the cloud, triggers action, yep. like schedules maintenance happening, and then yeah, exactly. yeah, awesome, all automated. Yep, exactly. And, and what I find also fantastic is that you have these interfaces that are meant, and that's why I was asking this question about who's wearing that hat, who's right. interacting with that, is uh -huh. everyone uses the tool that they've been working with or they're familiar with, right? Correct. It's the set right. of interface that's, that they're, yep. they're, they're using on a daily basis, right? So, right, right. Yeah, and what our customers we our customers are finding is that yes, it's a common common set of tools that they're familiar with, but now they're able to be much more effective you know, using similar tools that they've had in the past. Now we inject more insights into those tools, and that makes them that much more effective. They can have the yep. the technicians in the right place at the right time, understanding the repair that they need to make. Awesome. Well, Kyle, that was a great demo of what we can do, combining Azure IoT and Dynamics uh, field services. Excellent. So I hope to see more with you soon. Good, yeah. Let's, let's do it again. Let's do that again. Thank okay. you, Kyle. Thanks.